we're going to have to get into the practice of homosexuality and ancient Greece on this podcast at some point. So at some point, 100%. It could be a bonus episode. <laughs> I could talk about uh, my favorite character from Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I love him so much. Tight. Sounds good. All right. Next Pride Month. Let's do it. <laughs> Hello, mortals, monsters, and myth lovers alike. You're listening to Podcast of Poseidon, where we explore how ancient myths become modern pop culture by reading Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson and the Olympians. This is Chapter 24, Sirens. I'm your co-host, on loan from the Hunters of Artemis, Darian Smart. Joining me is my co-host and brother, hailing from Arkansas, DJ. How's everybody doing today? Yeah, in Arkansas, we hear a lot of sirens for, well, tornadoes to get everybody <laughs> warned and get underground, but yeah. Same basic concept. We, yeah, same basic concept. What are we talking about today, Darren? Sirens, DJ. Sirens? No way. Wow. Uh, but first, let's go ahead and swing by the camp store to make sure we have everything we need. Hey, y'all. No news, no updates, no major housekeeping for this episode of the camp store, but we do have something pretty special that we're excited to announce. It is... It's our birthday month. It is going to be our birthday month. Yeah. Yeah, October. I mean, we came out in 2020, October. Mm -hmm. Was it October? October 13th. 13th, that's what I thought. The very first episode. Uh, Yeah, we're very excited about it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do something special to celebrate, but we're not going to tell you what it is yet. It's a surprise. Just keep an ear out and keep an eye out, and you'll eventually pick up on it. Mm -hmm. Our next new episode will be up October 12th, but uh, maybe check your feeds next week and you'll see something. Have a wonderful day and now on to the show. All right, DJ, what do you remember about the sirens in the Sea of Monsters? I know they show up mm-hmm. and Annabeth's like, no, I want to hear this. And Percy's like, I don't know if that's a good idea, but okay. And they tie Annabeth up to the mast of the ship that they're on. Mm-hmm. And Percy puts wax in his ears, Mm -hmm. and Percy forgot to take Annabeth's knife. Yeah. So she obviously gets off the ship and starts running. Running. Swimming. (laughs) (laughs) Starts heading that direction. Yeah. (laughs) uh, Of the sirens. And sirens are bad. They'll eat you when you get close, Mm because the song is just so good. It's just so good. You want to get to the source of it. Uh, Percy grabs Annabeth and sees what she's seeing from the song, and uh, it is a skyline of New York mm-hmm. designed by Annabeth herself, with her dad and Athena together, mm-hmm. as well as Luke's there. Oh, and Percy is bothered by that, but he doesn't know why. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I think important detail: Luke is there. Who is not there, DJ? Percy's not there. Percy's not there. Yeah, Percy's not there. <laughs> Uh, and so Percy gri- but takes Annabeth and just pulls her down into the depths so that they can't hear the song, mm-hmm. which is a great Percy Beth moment. Great. Oh, the bottom of Siren Bay. It's so intense. Like, ugh, such vulnerability, such feelings, so confusing. They're just such, they're 13. It's so much. It's, it's such a, like, a defining moment in their early, like, friendship and its vulnerability introduces the idea of fatal flaw. It's also one of the reasons why we can't, I, it's also one of the reasons why I believe we can't take Annabeth's account of her family life as being completely unbiased because she clearly just wants her dad to be with Athena and maybe that has colored her perception of her stepmom. Whatever, not going to get into that right now. Yeah. I just, I very much enjoyed the moment and it was one of the leading factors to why Sea of Monsters was my favorite book for the longest time. Really? Uh, it's just i mean just in general like the whole story is great but like that moment it's just like very like i want that <laughs> you want you want what annabeth and uh, percy have or you want to hear the siren song a little bit of both oh. <laughs> a little bit of both nice yeah i do like how in the context of the story rick uses that moment to introduce the idea of like the fatal flaw like the thing that brings heroes down and for Annabeth, it's, it's like, oh, it's hubris because it shows her, like, the world is completely changed and created by image. Annabeth's design. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's that's really interesting. Like, oh, yeah, because that's why she wanted to hear it. She wanted to know more about herself. 
And it's like, oh, you got way more than you bargained for, babe. Yeah. DJ, what would your fatal flaw be? Sloth. <laughs> I'm like really lazy. If I can find a way to be lazy, I'm going to do it. Yeah, yeah, procrastination's a big one for you, buddy. 100%. Like, oh, it's a good thing you've never had to save the world on a deadline because you just oh, watch yeah. that bad boy whoop, right by. Yeah, just be like, oh, oh, oh. Ooh, Zeus wanted yeah. his lightning bolt win. Oh, shit. Win? Oh, I gotta go. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Take it a plane. Doesn't matter. <laughs> just gonna make it fast. Go, go, go. <laughs> it worked, didn't it? <laughs> All right, so so sirens. Here's where we go from here. We talk about sirens and mythology now. All right, sirens there's a pattern mythology. to these segments. There is, yeah. Sirens and mythology. I, I mean, I vaguely remember the Odyssey one. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe they show up in other ones, but I couldn't tell you. I don't know much stories, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Odyssey is a big one. Avi, they they do appear in a couple other other myths. Uh, Jason the Argonauts is is a really cool one. We we touched on that one a little bit in our Orpheus episode. Oh, I believe it. Yeah. I hope you believe it. You were there. <laughs> so So in, in, in Jason and the Argonauts, they're traveling through I mean, they, we, we talked about this in like the last episode with uh or not the last episode, but two episodes ago with Charybdis and Scylla. Uh-huh. Also sure. in the last episode with Cersei, too. No, this is just which one came first? Chronologically. I don't know. There are a I, lot of similarities. Lot I'm of realizing now. I want to say Jason and the Argonauts came first. But that is because I know that the Trojan War shortly after is when Rome got founded. Yes. Yes. So. I mean, that's I mean, that would be chronologically in, in the context of like the stories. But like, what about was like. Did it come after? I don't know. That we, that would require. I didn't research it. I'm not gonna. Get, we will circle back to it. I promise. I'll find <laughs> out. Okay. So, Jason and the Argonauts. They know they're gonna have to go by the sirens, and it's like fine because they have Orpheus with them, who just does like a battle of the bands, and so Hell yeah. Orpheus starts jamming out and just drowns out the siren song with his sweet sweet tunes. Hell and yeah. They're all good, except for one member of the crew, a dude named. So I don't know how to pronounce this uh, gentleman's name. Uh, <laughs> is it is it Boots? Is it Butts? Is it Boutes? How do you spell it? B U T E S. It might be just uh, Butus. Oh, you know, Butus sounds right. Yeah. Yeah, it's Butus. Perfect, Butus. Okay. Oh, Butes. Butes. Okay. Yeah. So apparently this dude just had, like, really good hearing. He wasn't in the nosebleeds. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't so he, in Orpheus's nosebleeds. He was in the Siren's nosebleeds, which was in the place you Yes. <laughs> Basically, yes. So he does jump off the ship and starts swimming towards, towards Siren Bay. Uh, but it's okay because Aphrodite saves him? Hell yeah. And that's all the information I have on that because I could not go down this rabbit hole. Right now, we have a siren episode to get back ah, to. Dude, shortly after she, he was saved, he became her lover. <laughs> wow, just things worked out great. Sent to Sicily and became her lover and became became a Sicilian king. Wow, so just literally things worked out great for old Boutis. Good for yeah. him. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That usually doesn't happen to uh, mortal lovers of, of divine beings. No. <laughs> Things no. usually end pretty poorly for them. Yeah. But he seemed to be doing pretty good. Good for him. Good, good for him. Good for him. Okay. So, also, well on Aphrodite. Like, way to go, girl. Get your yeah. man. So, anyway. We did go down that rabbit hole. Just a little bit. I appreciate it. Thank you for sharing, DJ. Yeah. Uh, other times the sirens would appear would be uh, Ovid the the Roman the Roman poet whom we have discussed said that the sirens were companions of Persephone 
and that Demeter gave them the rings to, or so they could help her search the world for her daughter after she was taken by Hades. Uh, Mm. Alternate versions would suggest that Demeter cursed the sirens when they failed to protect Persephone after she was abducted, and that essentially they had to, they were cursed to live forever until a mortal who could hear their song was able to pass by safely. Hmm. So I I think, I mean, that, that thing definitely came way, way, way after the Odyssey. Yeah. But that does kind of suggest that the sirens are dead now because, because Odysseus got by. Sorry, I'm listening to things right now. Yeah, what are you looking at? I was looking at the, I'm on, <laughs> I'm on the Wikipedia page for sirens, and I was looking at their sirens and death, to see if it, uh, came up or if it's just relating sirens to death. Mm, mm-hmm. It looks like it's just relating sirens to death. Mm. Also, they look weird as fuck in all their terracotta things. Yeah, yeah, we, I got, <laughs> I got off track. We should, we should double back and talk about the sirens themselves. Let's set the yeah. stage so we have a clear picture of what's going on. There's a couple of ways for the sirens to be interpreted here. First one, we got just a bird with a woman's head. Mm-hmm. That one I see. That's honestly the most normal one. Uh, <laughs> and then we got one that's obviously a woman with wings, but her lower half is the half of a chicken. Mm, that's a look. Very Baba that Yaga. Very much so a look, and I'm. It's a little weird. Uh, and then like the other one that I'm seeing here is. Uh, the same thing, except her feet are just chicken feet. Mm-hmm. Chicken feet. <laughs> the motion uh, you did. Our audience feet. can't see it. It makes me so sad. Yeah. And it looks like the most common one, because I've seen it like two or three times on this thing, is uh, the lady, the bird with the lady's head. Yeah, bird with the lady's head. Which is not what I pictured for sirens. Really? Okay. Because that... I mean, that like creepy mermaids, honestly, for sirens. Creepy Mermaid is the most common depiction of sirens we see today. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, in Sea of Monsters, they are described as, like, being vultures, which is, like, human faces. Uh, Percy says that they keep transforming into all the people he wants to see most, but their mouths are just caked with all, like, the gristle mm-hmm. and rot of all of their victims. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I remember that now. Okay. Yeah. So, so sirens. Let's, let's, let's deep dive into the... Uh, let's, yeah. Let's let's deep dive into their their whole mythos. They're usually presented as daughters of the river god Achilles, and either their mo- and their mother is one of the muses. There are options. There are a lot of options. A lot of options for the muses. It makes sense also if singing shown to be daughters of Oceanus and Gaia. S- yeah, specifically, Chthon, Chthon, Chthon. Mm. Let's say yes. Um, or forces. Yeah, yeah. They that's a that's another less common, but still, because as as we you know like to talk about, yeah. there is no one solid canon for any of this. Yeah, it looks like the most common one is though, uh, Achilles uh, and Melpomene. Yeah, which which I didn't actually look this up. Which muse is is Melpomene? Let's see. I, it's this probably is not Melpanine. a hyperlink. Is it Mel? No, because it ends in an E. It's oh Melpamini. yeah, and per- Persephone. So Mel Melpanine. Melpamini. Melpamini. Okay. Tragedy, and liar playing. Yeah, that. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Tragedy right. that follows a liar playing makes a lot of sense. God, Britannica, you got so many pop ups when I open your page. I can't believe you can access Britannica. It keeps cutting me out. It wants me to subscribe now. I can't Britannica. I'm sorry. Okay, Don't so. Got the money. <laughs> sorry, what? Don't got the money. Don't got the money. Okay. All right, all right. So, sirens. They. The number of sirens varies by account. I think Homer said two. Could be up to yeah. eight at times. Uh, they also sometimes have names. Homer didn't give them one, but other poets would. There are so many different names. And 
and they're so inconsistent. Oh, there's a ton of names here. Holy shit. Yeah, and I was like, ah, it's not interesting enough to get into that. Just know that sometimes they have names. Yes. So let's okay. Let's talk about the sirens and their role in the Odyssey real quick. Okay. So after Odysseus and his men go on that that side quest to Hades that Cersei told them that they had to do, they come back to Cersei's island to like basically have a long rest and replenish their spell slots. I don't know why, but this is what they do. Just to regroup. They know it's a safe place in this area. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she turned us to pigs once, but uh, we got to hang out there for a year, so it's probably fine. Yeah. And and it was, because after the Odysseus and Co. swing back by, and like Cersei serves him a big-ass feast, and then she takes Odysseus to side, and she's like, okay, so next thing you're going to do, you're going to go that way, and you're going to have to go past the sirens. This is the same point in time where she tells him that he's going to have to go past Skillis and uh, Cribdis and Scylla. Uh, those encounters are not in the same order in Sea of Monsters. No. But. They quite aren't. Yeah, in Odyssey, it actually goes Cersei, Cribdis and, uh, Sirens, and then Cribdis and Scylla. But I like, I like, I get why Rick did it in this particular order. I like the, the entrance in being between the monsters. And also it does stuff for plot. Yeah. Anyway, it's like the so, only way to get in is to just go through them. Mm -hmm. So Cersei is actually the one that tells Odysseus, all right, so if you hear this song, you're going to throw yourself overboard to try to get to it, and you're definitely going to drown or just get bashed to death on the rocks. So your best bet is to have everyone on your ship just fill their ears with candle wax, block it out, keep sailing, no worries. However... If you, Odysseus, want to hear the siren song safely, and of course you would because you are the protagonist and just so special and so clever, just don't fill your ears with candle wax. Do have your men tie you to the mast, though. And if you beg to be let go, just tell them to tie you tighter. Sound good? And that's what Odysseus does. Did you, what are you looking at? I was reading along on the... I was trying to see if, like, because it sums up says po post Homeric authors would often say that the sirens are fated to die after Odysseus passed. Uh huh. And so I was hoping that maybe some post Homeric authors would say what he heard. Oh, I got it oh, right you here. You have my... something there? Oh, nice. Okay. I got it right here, Daddy. Yeah, yeah buddy. Trust me. I thought, then, like, why were you bothering me? I'm still listening. I was just curious <laughs> to what you're looking yeah, at. I'm looking at that. Okay. Okay. So. You want you want to know what Odysseus heard? I, I can tell you, thanks to this translation that we've been referencing by Emily Wilson. So Odysseus tied to the mask. We, everyone's got their ears filled with wax except for him. We traveled fast, and we were in earshot of the sirens. They knew our ship was near and started singing. And I'm not going to try to sing this because no one wants to hear that. <laughs> Odysseus, come here. You are well known for many stories. Glory of the Greeks. Now stop your ship and listen to our voices. All those who pass this way hear honeyed song poured from our mouths. This music brings them joy. They go on their way with greater knowledge. Since we know everything the Greeks and Trojans suffered in Troy by God's will, and we know whatever happens anywhere on earth. The song was so melodious, I longed to hear more. And then Ted's like, hey, let me go. And his men are like, no. Nuts. It's a... Uh... A little disappointing. I don't know. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I, compared to what Annabeth heard, right? Oh, by far. By <laughs> far. Like, Odysseus. Hey, come here. Or just like listen to our song. We're about to sing everything that ever happens. Great. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And it, it is, I think it is, well, I, I maybe Odysseus's, and I guess if we're going to frame this in it, I actually do, I like that because I, I didn't ever know what. He had heard he either until I was yeah. researching and actually read it. And I think it is suitable for the kind of character that Odysseus is, where he is described as his whole thing is like, he is so clever, right? He is favored mm -hmm. by Athena. He is so wise. So, of course, being tempted by knowledge, getting to know everything would tempt him, especially because he's on this very dangerous quest. He's been up against a lot of surprises that he wasn't prepared for, didn't expect, or didn't know that that was going to happen. 
And in his last meeting with Cersei, she tells him, okay, go past the sirens, go past Skillis and Charybdis, Skilla and Charybdis. And then after that, I can't tell you what's going to happen after that. You're just going to have to figure it out. So he's kind of, at this point, he's about to be flying blind again, sailing yeah. blind again. And so it, it, being tempted by that kind of knowledge of everything, that tracks. Though it's not what Annabeth saw, no, certainly not. 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 <laughs> right? Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's, what's most interesting is that Odysseus never sees the sirens, so Homer never describes the sirens. Mm. All those depictions of the sirens you were talking about earlier, those are all things that came much later. Okay. Now, the earliest one, and the one you mentioned is seeing the most, is of the, the, the bird with just the woman's head, right? That's the version that Rick used in Sea of Monsters, right? Mm. Although the shape-shifting aspect is something they created for the story, just like, like seeing that vision is is different, though I do like yeah. it very much. In time, you may notice that the uh, the depiction changed yeah, quite a bit. To mermaids. Yeah, yeah. Specifically when it got to like Christian and English beliefs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. By the uh, like in the seventh century okay, quote in the seventh century Anglo Anglo Latin catalog Liber Monstrum says that sirens were women from their heads to their navels, and instead of legs, they had fishtails. So just straight-up mermaids at this point. Yeah. Uh, in the Middle Ages, you permanently see the sirens as just, like, mermaids. Naked women. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, naked women come up in the 1800s and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, yep, yep, the, the painter, we can blame this painter, William Eddy, in his... Like 1837 painting of the sirens and Ulysses, he just straight up paints them as naked ladies. They're just <laughs> not no birds. They also don't even have like liars like you would see in some like other art depictions of them. No tails. They're just hot naked women, and that's what all the other artists who have followed really ran with. Like that's what the. And I can't say that I like blame them because it's. I mean, like as we know, being out on sea that long is a long time. Yeah, it is. It's interesting because also you'll notice in in the Odyssey, the sirens are not tempting Odysseus with sex. It's with knowledge. It's with yeah. what he wants most. It's and, worth, the, yeah. and I think it's it's very telling that these very female coded monsters, because the sirens are depicted as women with bird like women like women's heads, women monsters. She, her, those are what's used for the sirens. In time. What was alluring about them no longer became just their their skill as like a singer and an artist or just their knowledge of all things. It was, well, obviously the only way they could like enchant men is just with sex. So not only does like their power just become, oh, I want to have sex with you so bad, but their physical like depictions go from being like this bizarre like monster with this amazing power and this great knowledge yeah. to sexy naked ladies who present the ideal beauty standards of Western femininity. Yeah. And I hate that. <laughs> Just because it says a lot about how women are like viewed and valued. Like, well, obviously they can't be smart or talented to have like seduced all these men to throw themselves in the water and drown. They just also must be really hot though. <laughs> like she was so hot though. Yeah. And DJ, I want you to answer for all cis men in this moment. Why do you do these things? Why are you, why are you like this? Oh, man. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen a lot of memes about it. Um, let me, hold on. Let me search something up. <laughs> oh, no. Wait, Wait a hold second. On. Hold on. Find this real quick. Hold on. You're good. It's a great meme that actually kind of explains this. Uh, okay, so it's a Japanese word. Called Kenja Taimu. Okay. Uh, I probably butchered that. It's called Wise Man Time. Now, this happens after post nut. So it's post nut clarity. <laughs> Before that, your mind is, cl- is clouded, man. I'm like 100%. After nut, you're like, fuck did I just do? Why did I do that? <laughs> So when you're jam-packed on a ship with nothing but dudes, it's like getting a little musky from all the fucking dudes. 
you're just like, ah. And then you see what could be a, a lady out in the land. Some people might be acting unwise. They just need to rub one out and get that wise man time. <laughs> I'd like to point out that that is entirely on the dude and really has nothing to do with no, the lady. No, 100% lady. on the dude. Yeah, nothing to do with the girl. It's 100% the dude. <laughs> All right. All right, I asked. You answered. I appreciate the honesty, DJ. I'm glad we could have this space in the pod together. I'm glad we record remotely. Yeah. <laughs> We can ask John too. He would absolutely. I know. We are not. No. He is for bonus episodes early. Johnny does not come to the main feed. They have to pay for that content. Johnny would agree with me on that. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying men suck. Uh. <laughs> Here it is. Uh, here's an urban dictionary definition of it. I Period don't... after orgasm, when a man is free from sexual desire and can think clearly. <laughs> Meditate, bitches. Take a shower. Go for a Not run. Not all of us are fucking asexual, Darian. I'm just saying there are options. <laughs> you just gotta bust one out. <laughs> You're right. I can't speak on this whatsoever. Thank you for calling me out there. <laughs> <laughs> Did I said just meditate your way out of sexual frustration. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. This show is not for kids. No, it's not. Just... We're talking about a kid's book. It's not for kids. <laughs> We're the grown ups who read the kid's book. Okay. So I want to talk about Jess Zimmerman real quick. Okay. She's an author. She wrote a book that came out, I think, last year or maybe earlier this year. I don't remember the exact date called Women and Other Monsters. Uh huh. Great fucking book. Just kick ass. I believe it. She talks about sirens in it, and her specific thesis of what makes a siren monstrous is not those early depictions of, like, whoa, is a bird with a lady head? That's scary, right? Yeah. It is the fact that the sirens are offering something, and that offer is unfulfilled, and instead the enticement off that offer is used to kill men. And that's what makes them monstrous, because patriarchy. Right on. Yeah, I agree and with that. Yep, and I think that's why so often when we see sirens in pop culture, I hate it. Like, so many times sirens are used and I'm like, God, this is gross. God, this is being used to, like, uphold unrealistic expectations of women or, like, pit women against each other or frame women as, like, Tim Tristes and monsters. And, yeah, it's an actual monster, but, like, she's still, like, a traditionally very female-coded monsters. And I just like, God, I hate it. But there are some exceptions. There's some good exceptions. There is. So let's. I'll let you go first because I really only have one. You only have one? Okay. I've got 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 a couple. The 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 very first one, when I think of sirens in modern pop culture that comes to mind for me, are the sirens from the DreamWorks animated movie Sinbad Legend of the Seven Seas. That's a good one. I was going to say, DJ, have you seen this movie? I haven't seen it in so long, Mm -hmm. but I do remember a good amount of it. Yeah. Yeah. This is It came out in that era of 2D animation when everything was fucking busting, just going off Mm -hmm. so fucking hard. And then immediately we're swapping to 3D animation. I'm like, fuck you guys. (laughs) I just like the movies that were coming out around the time that like the transition happened that were in 2D. We can point to Treasure Planet and Atlantis both that had like such beautiful fucking sets and animation styles. Mm-hmm. That I'd love to see more of. And we were immediately like, no, we want to move on to 3D animation. I'm like, that's cool. And I've seen some beautiful things come from 3D animation. Mm-hmm. However, Princess and the Frog was fucking awesome. It was, yeah. Uh, Treasure Planet did this kick ass thing where they incorporated 2D and 3D to like yeah, really create Atlantis, like depth. Atlantis did a little bit of it. Like, mm-hmm. not a lot, but like we see it with their, with the, Big like the, the guardians. robot cars, the guardians, the oh, and the the, the vehicles, the, yeah, yeah, that's what it was, the vehicles, <laughs> the cars, yeah. Man, they really wanted to sell toys. I just watched that movie like two days ago, actually, and when they show so off, good. like I still here, love that, movie. like they damn, they really wanted to sell toys of those. Yeah, but, they uh, didn't. No, <laughs> but man, and we were gonna get like the 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 submarine voyage ride at Disneyland. They were gonna reskin it as an Atlantis ride. <sighs> They had, like, a banner up and ever- coming soon, Journey to Atlantis. 
And then they then the movie bombed. Movie bombed. <laughs> yeah, I gotta make money. That's why there's nothing Treasure Planet in the parks. <laughs> yeah, which is a bummer. Uh, not what this podcast is about. We're no, going not what the podcast is about. Sinbad. So Sinbad does a thing where there. Uh, I don't actually think any of my examples I'm bringing to the table are they are bird women, which fine, whatever. We never see bird women. They're literally water mm-hmm. elementals. They're like <laughs> water spirits that look like. Like, curvy, skinny, sexy ladies. And they use their songs to enchant, clearly, like, tapping into sexual desire, but specifically only for men, because it's only the dudes that are affected, and, like, the one lady on the crew in the damn movie, except for the chaos goddess Eris, is, like... Ugh, man, I have to say... I mean, it's great. I love that sequence. She's a badass, but Mm -hmm. it does rely on... Siren's power is the sexual temptation of men. And like, fine. Like, fine. <laughs> fine. Yeah. Like, fine. Okay, that's what? fair. But yeah, that's cool. Uh, I've got, I, I almost want to save yours, DJ, because I have a feeling I know what it is. Like, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure okay. it's number two on my list. Okay. So I'm going to just do real quick. Round up of just like different sirens. Uh, once upon a time, Can fuck yeah, brought sirens? it back. Uh, there's a siren who's the guardian of a lake, and uh, she relies on uh, shape shifting to manipulate uh-huh. people, show them what they want. So when Prince Charming rolls up to the lake, she shape shifts to look like Snow White. Uh, uh, okay. He does. He is able to kill her though. It's very dramatic. And also, why did we have to? Sirens are usually murdered, is another thing. Yeah. Like, do I want to explore how they are murdered to show the dominance of men over sexual temptation of women? No, I do not, but that's kind of what it is. Supernatural had a siren, which was just exceptionally gross. <laughs> like, like she, she, be, she works as a stripper, which is not the gross part. Sex work is not the gross part of this. Uh, the fact that the siren who works as a stripper convinces men to kill the women in their lives is the the, the gross part of it. And Holy then, uh, though the siren does shapeshift into a very noted, attractive male FBI agent who befriends Dean and then tries to convince Dean to, uh, to kill Sam. I don't remember this episode. I don't know if I watched it or not, but... Yeah, that sounds like some bullshit Supernatural would do. <laughs> I No comment. I haven't seen any of the series. Great. We'll move past it. One that, for some reason, has really stuck with me for over uh, through my from my childhood to into my uh, adulthood. American Dragon Jake Long. That's <laughs> sirens? Yeah, there was a siren episode. Um, like a mind control siren was the villain. Uh. And... And Trixie, Jake's friend, is, like, convinced it's the cheerleader. Like, she is convinced it's definitely the, the pretty fucking cheerleader. I, pretty girls are evil. You just fucking know it's the cheerleader. And then the, the twist is that it's just, like, the, just the average, like, geeky girl uh-huh. who's secretly, like, the siren. And she gets swimmer's ear is the thing I remember is that, like, it's, like, it's so frustrating to be a siren with swimmer's ear. And so now I'm like, just in general isn't fun. I, it just, I mean, yeah, I'm sure. It sounds it. terrible. I'm pretty sure my ears are kind of fucked up a little bit because I had so many ear infections growing up. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, she turns out the twist is like, oh, yeah, no one would suspect me because everyone thinks pretty girls are evil anyway. <laughs> like, huh. Okay. Understandable. Uh, last uh, one that I want to shout out before we go to yours is Samurai Jack. <laughs> In the episode, Samurai The Boys. Scotsman Saves Jack. Understandable. There are sirens. And the reason I really want to talk about this episode, well, Samurai, Samurai Jack is great. Like, yeah, it is. I need to sit down and watch it because I've heard nothing but good things about it. I've got like some feelings about Except for maybe like the, the last end. season. Yeah. Everyone's like, eh, the last season's kind of rough. Oh, I watched it with Lucy and I was like, hmm, see, ooh, mm, this feels like something that would have come out in, like, 2007 and that the creator did not grow at all in the time following. Anyway, so Sirens show up. Scotsman saves Jack, not by, like, being able to, like, particularly resist the Sirens' call, but just because he doesn't like the music. 
<laughs> so he defeats like, them <laughs> with a very Orpheus style of just like playing traditional Scottish folk music. Yes, there are bagpipes involved. And it's Love great. It. Love it. That's super good. Uh, now, yeah, as Darren said, she probably already knows what it is because it's the only thing that I can think of right now that has sirens. Um, My Little Pony, Across Your Girl's Rainbow Rocks. What? It is Such number two on my list. Yeah, it's it's a very honestly solid movie. It's uh, really I think good, my favorite actually. out of the uh, Rainbow, out of the Equestria Girls, um, maybe even out of the, all like the My Little Pony stuff because Rainbow Rocks, like the music was just so good. That was a Battle of the Bands movie. Of course, the music Battle was of good. The Bands movie and the music was awesome. I still awesome. I need to listen to the soundtrack. Like I haven't listened to it in so fucking long, but I just remember that the songs were always just oh fucking, they're all fucking awesome. Good. They're great. Also, like. I just love Sunset Shimmer. She was Sunset my Shimmer favorite was awesome, character. Dude. She was so much fun. Yeah. Big fan of Sunset Shimmer. Big fan of Sunset Shimmer. And uh, yeah, the sirens in that movie, their whole thing was just make everybody mad with our music. Yeah. But not mad at to... us. Just mad at the people around them. Great chaos with our music. And then when they break their necklaces, they can't sing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. It was, uh, they were, uh, for those who don't know, a uh, my Little Pony Equestria Girls is My Little Pony, but set in an alternate, uh, not even alternate reality, just like a different realm where yeah. every pony has a human counterpart. Yeah. And so the sirens. <laughs> the sirens like crossed over and found out, hey, there's untapped magic here. So we can fucking work with that. Oh, no, they were banished by Celestia because Celestia had no idea what the fuck was in that mirror, right? No, they were banished by Star Swirl the Bearded, the Merlin stand in. <laughs> Hell yeah. And they were hippocampy. Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah. So, still with the, the sirens are mermaid thing. Yep. Uh, but they're like, hey, we can do stuff here. And they've been doing stuff ever since. And then mm-hmm. they're like, like, oh, there's a spike of magic at the school because last summer or like a couple months prior. Twilight Sparkle from out from the actual My Little Pony world shows up, fuck shit up a little bit, and <laughs> presents the elements of friendship. <laughs> it's so fucking weird. God, it's so weird. weird. But I, that's why I love it because I'm like, this is a show fun. about magic pretty ponies. And then they made it super weird. <laughs> and I love the weirdness. So much fun. It was really cute. And then, was it that movie that the Twilight Sparkle from that world showed up, or was that the third movie? The third movie. She shows up at like a post credit scene at the end, and mm-hmm. it's the third movie where they go to the camp. Or no, the other school camp. shows up. It's like a it's a, it's a contest. It's a it's a yeah, it's a contest. It's like Not what this podcast is about. Contest. Not what this podcast is about. But in that one, it's also like a la Orpheus because they are beaten by song. <laughs> it's fucking great. Uh, and, um, I have the three movies, the first threes at Nana's house. I'm I, know. I I was going to grab it, but I'm like, I probably shouldn't cause Johnny will bully me. <laughs> like he's going to not bully you anyway. No, 100%. No. Yeah. I just, I just don't want to add fuel to the fire. The like, fuel. Yeah. Hey, I think we need to do a bonus episode on one piece with Johnny. <laughs> probably. Cause I got some, yeah. It's obvious inspiration from mythology. Yeah, and also because Rick Riordan's wife tweeted about it recently. <laughs> and apparently Rick has seen a big chunk of it. Yeah, yeah Sky P is kind of a big chunk of it. I just got past it, actually. And, oh, and I have like, no idea whether that's like, a lot or like not. It's like 20%. Okay, that's not, <laughs> well, that's not nothing. Right, Sky, Sky P itself, like getting past it, it's like 20%. But Sky P itself, maybe like 50 chapters. Okay, I was still just surprised to know Rick Riordan had watched One Piece, period. <laughs> What are you talking about? It's a big ass fucking thing. Everybody has seen some amount of One Piece. If you haven't, you're lying. That's a big statement to make. One Piece has been going, and was Saturday that it was Saturday morning cartoons for okay. like six or seven years on Four Kids. All right, the Saturday morning cartoon thing actually, because even adults would have seen it because if their kids were watching it, that one actually tracks for me more. You have to yeah. find it now. Now you have to track it down if you want to watch it. No. It's not just there. Yeah, but everybody has seen some portion of the start. Okay. So, DJ, what do you think a siren song sounds like? 
in every depiction that we see, it's more melodic and like swaying and maybe a little operatic. And so it's mm-hmm. just like echoey, echoey and just like, yeah, that's great and all. Um, I hear those songs and I don't want to listen anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, not for me. Not my, not my siren song. Except for the music in Minecraft, honestly. Oh, nice. Yeah. The music in Minecraft really does like somehow 100% I hear it and I have a sense of longing for something I don't know exists. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. what do I long for while listening to this? Why am I longing and wanting right now? Yeah, that's that's deep, dude. That's a lot. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> This is just shit fucking hits when I'm just sitting there building my fucking, uh, I'm just building a house and then it just starts playing this piano and I'm like, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you? This is actually a question that I posed to a number of people. I put it on the podcast Instagram story, which you should totally be following, y'all. Podcast to Poseidon on Instagram. We post memes. Well, we share memes from the damn meme page. I post videos of our cats. Heck yeah. But I had uh, a fair amount of responses from uh, some of our listeners there. It was just mostly really interesting to see what folks thought when they thought Siren Song. Obviously, I couldn't like really follow up and ask why. Not as in I thought any of these were wrong, but just like, when I say, what is a siren song to you? Like, why did this song, what, what, what do you imagine that that sounds like that made you pick this? So some of the responses we got were a song called Who Are You by, I, I'm going to guess how this is pronounced, Surf, Surfina? By the who? Huh? By the who? By the who? <laughs> uh, it's uh, S-V-R-C-I-N-A. So I think I'm going to guess the V is supposed to pronounce like a U. And it's no, it's Sven. Sven, Sven S- Nersina. What? No, well, I just mean like the S V is pronounced like Sver, whatever the fuck. Uh, Zversina. Zverzina. If if that's how it is. Maybe. It might. It might just be Swedish. It might be pronounced who the fuck knows? Because Sven's <laughs> a Swedish name. Maybe also. So I apologize if it is a real name or not a real name. If it is not just stylized and has a clear pronunciation. I do not know it, and I apologize for that. Please yeah. let me know. I've got uh, Fantasy by Alina Barres and the Gillimations. Okay. Uh, Attracted to You by Pink Panthers. I haven't heard any of these songs. You'll have heard this one. Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. I don't know if I'd put that under a siren song, but yeah. I think I think there are... I think maybe the start, but like... Uh, the song Devil by the Korean artist Wan Ho was recommended by Fran of the Damn Meme Pod. Not the Damn Meme Pod. Damn it. <laughs> uh, Fran of the Best Damn Camp Pod. And this is just, this is a very, like, ethereal type. Oh, like, mesmerizing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just... I'm just going to quote Fran here. When I was watching the music video, I was like, damn, that is ethereal. And she was like, right? I'm gay as hell. And even I was enchanted. <laughs> nice. Uh, Molly from Fatal Flaw Podcast also chimed in and gave me just this 14-song playlist. But her her top four on the playlist were... These are the ones that she said specifically she felt like Siren Songy. Were, uh, Angel of the Morning... By Juice Newton, I Love You Always Forever by Donna Lewis, Back in My Arms by Carly Hansen, and People I've Been Sad by Christy and the Queens. And Molly clarified that these were songs that she picked because I would jump out of a boat to hear them. Understandable. Yep. And uh, if you hear those songs and know anything about Molly, yeah, that tracks. That tracks big time (laughs) on those songs. Uh, Understandable. I also need to... Specifically, I want to real quick shout out past guests and my dear friend, Skylar Barsanti. Uh, she had a couple really good ones, uh, specifically My Tears Ricochet by, Ty- by Taylor Swift. Uh, the intro to that one, she said, was just like, that was one that she categorized as it feels sirening to her because of just the sound of it, especially the, mm-hmm. the before the lyrics. Uh, Epiphany 
has a lot of like ocean and downward things that she thought of. And then Lighthouse by Halsey, just just big water across rock or song across rock and rotter vibes. Nice. I thought that's exactly how she wanted it, considering the fact that it's a song called Lighthouse. Yeah, no, exactly. And then I have to do it because from the damn Is snack bar pod. Is it my heart pod, will go wrong? No. Damn snack bar pod, another one of the Ryan Rivers podcasts. Replied to the Instagram story with Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley. Because it tricks everybody. Because it is, because it's a trap. Because it's a trap. It tricks everybody. So, so these are all very, very different songs, and I was very fascinated by, by the difference. I think I really should have expected Never Gonna Give You Up to show that that was, that was on me. Someone was gonna. Someone was gonna send you that bit lie link. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, they did just respond to it. But the fun thing about Instagram stories, if you say, have a poll but with music and someone responds to it, when you go to the response and you share it, it'll just start playing the song. <laughs> so they got me. Nice. The joke's on them. I did share it. I got everybody else. The seven people who will look to that story. Seven people. It counts. So, DJ, what, uh, what makes, what do you think makes a real song, a siren song. Like you, you talked about that want and longing. For me, that's what a siren song is. Yeah. Right? It's just like that want and longing. Or uh, another song that I might consider a siren song for myself because I, another reason I would see a song as a siren song is because maybe I see myself in it a little mm. too much. Oh, no. Um, it's the song. <laughs> I mean, it's like, this is a good reason, right? Like, this is a okay. good song. Um, it's this song called Don't Kill My Buzz by Cisco Adler. Okay. And it's just like, don't like, don't fucking like, like, don't, don't hate me or like, don't kill my buzz just because you don't understand it or you're not, you've never tried it. It's kind of a song about getting high. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. But other than that, like, yeah, it's super good. It's like, don't like, why, why the fuck are you acting like that, man? Like, I'm just sitting here doing my thing, just vibing, mm-hmm. and you're over there getting on my case about what it is I'm doing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. I definitely, for me, when I thought, what is a siren song, I immediately jumped to those songs that fill me with that, that, that want, that really intense longing and stuff. Uh, for me, the one that first jumped into my head is that song Soldier Poet King by the Oh Hellos. Mm-hmm. I don't and- think I've heard it. Uh, it is so the song is about Jesus, mm-hmm. but the vibe of the song just makes you think of dancing on a worn dirt road, surrounded by your friends, big flowing, colorful skirts, people playing the fiddle. There's me over the fire. There's fresh cider to drink, just like this. Not like quote unquote simpler time, but just. This experience of joy and community that I have never experienced. But that is what that song makes me think of. Yeah, no, I get that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll I'll have to sit down and listen to it. So, yeah, that one's one for me. I think other another one that I I have, like, a bit of a list. I don't want to, like, looking back, I'm like, I don't want to share them all. (laughs) But uh, in the same way that, like, so... You talk about like the the Minecraft one is like ugh, it makes me long for something I don't know what it is and I'm never gonna have it but I want so badly yeah like that's Soldier Poet King for me but in the same way like Don't Kill My Buzz is like I see myself in it and it's like more of a an uplifting type experience type siren song that you want Fire Escape by Andrew Mc 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 McCannon let's mm-hmm. say yes uh, Andrew McCannon in the Wilderness is just this really fun song. But not, like, necessarily fun because it's, like, poppy and upbeat, though it is. It's fun because it it makes me think of running through puddles mm-hmm. along brick walls, chasing your friends as you're going from one place to the next and the night has been going on forever and it's never going to end. And 
everything is exhilarating and everything is exciting. And it's like every moment is crystallized into just this absolute moment of like joy and excitement. And you could like jump up and catch the stars Mm -hmm. and just hold them in your hand and use that to light your way as you're running. Yeah. Running motifs are running and falling motifs are like a big one for me. I'm realizing, (laughs) which is interesting because I don't like, I don't like one of those things. And the other one is I'm pretty fine with actually, but yeah. Um, I have to say like another siren song for me that I would be like, maybe I'm relating to the song a little too much. And this is a little more in a negative light Mm. is honestly a lot of, the band AJR, a lot of their newer stuff. And it's more along the lines of like uh, the song Karma Mm -hmm. is one that like a couple of years ago uh, when I was just, I this is going to be a little personal. I just got served. Right. Mm -hmm. And I just found this band and they had just released this song and it's a song called Karma. And it's this guy saying, I've been so like the chorus is I've been so good. I've been helpful and friendly. I've been so good. Why am I feeling empty? Uh, I've been so good with like, and where the hell is the karma? It's like, I've just been doing my best. I've been doing everything right in terms of what I've been taught, but I'm not getting rewarded for it. And mm-hmm. at that point in time, I was really like, fuck man, it was, it was hurting real bad. And so I'm mm-hmm. listening to that song. I'm like, this is not good. I'm, f- I'm feeling this song a little too hard. Oh yeah. Um, Ooh. I'd have to say one of the more recent songs of theirs that I maybe related to because this dropped right as Emily broke up with me and it was World's Smallest Violin. Oh. And it's, it's, you listen to it. It's this really happy, upbeat song. But he's talking about how, like, I have problems. But then my grandpa went and served in World War II and he's, like, such an upstanding dude. Like, I don't really think I have much room to complain. Just let me play my world. Just let me just play my violin for you and shit like that. I'm like, Ugh. Oh, Yeah. And I like a lot of their songs too. And even like this, okay, one, this song, this will be the last end of my AJR rant because I do love them. And I'm like, I'm trying to see if I can hopefully get money so I can go see their show in, I think, Utah in June. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's called Netflix Trip. Okay. And it's a song and it like references The Office a lot, right? Okay. Uh, and it's like he's relating his life experiences and like at the time as to what episode was coming out around that time too. Uh huh. And like the whole point of the song is, I grew up with this. This is not like what well, like a big thing is like, um, it's not just to show my, who I am and is and who I am is in these episodes. Uh, so don't just tell me it's don't tell me it's just a show. And I'm like, yes, uh, I feel that specifically with Adventure Time, right? I was growing up with that show. And yeah. I'm around, like, I could point to different times in my life as to what episodes I was watching at the time. I'm like, fuck me. <laughs> no, I, I like that. I definitely, there are things that I have, like, watched, listened to, and I just, like, when I visit it again, I have these clear, like, oh, that was me. That was 2016, yeah. Darian. That was 2007, Darian. That was 2014, Darian, like, the, yeah, I, I those was, pieces are just so much. Those pieces, those pieces are there, and I am in these moments. And if I like me going back and listening to House of Hades, I was thinking about the D and D campaign I was having with my friends because uh, before we would do our session, which was after school, I had a block period that I I had a free period essentially. Uh-huh. I didn't have a class that, so I would sit in the library waiting, reading House of Hades and uh, Blood of Olympus, waiting for it to go, and I'd be like, shit. I distinctly remember this. Oh, yeah. Fuck me. <laughs> no, I like that. I like that's the very, I feel like that's a very, not often talked about, but very like relatable human experience very that I real. love. About- it's a big thing why I like HR is because a lot of their shit is like, this is very real stuff that I'm listening to and I can relate a lot to it. Yeah, it's interesting. We often refer to like pieces of media as like, oh, this is escapist. I use this to get away for a little bit, but it's, it's also, it's, it's sticky. And even when you're trying Mm -hmm. to get away from something by escaping into something else, or even if you're not actively trying to get away from something and you're just like for a moment escaping into a story, that story is still going to, whether it's a book or or a show or a podcast, like that story is still going to catch pieces of your life. Yeah. And I just, I think that's really cool that that song is kind of feels like it's capturing that. But yeah, listen to that song the first time. I'm like, dude, this is way too fucking real. (laughs) Like, what the fuck? 
And specifically the fact that they used The Office, one of like the biggest pieces of media in America today. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people could relate to that song. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, that was that was a big cultural touchstone that a lot of people shared as it was coming out and then revisiting it again on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, I've got a semi-embarrassing one and then I've got a serious one. Which one, okay. which one do you want? Let's go to the embarrassing one. Okay. Uh, it, this song is called An Awful Lot of Running and it's by Chameleon Circuit. Uh, <laughs> Which was a Doctor Who. Was... I say band. I'm pretty sure it was a full band, but like one artist doing like all of the the stuff. I my my favorite song for this was Big Bang Two. Oh, Big Bang Two was very good. But yeah, Big but Bang Two was such a fucking bop. Awful lot of running is the siren song for me. It's not necessarily. It's not even my favorite song of Chameleon Circuit, but it's it's the siren one because it captures that feeling of wanting just an alien in a big blue box to fall into your life and take you off to run through the stars. Like that mm. is that feeling. That's that feeling of longing. Of like, I'm never going to have that. But like, man, <laughs> if I was on a boat and some singing made me feel like that, yeah, I'd probably jump in the water too. Yeah. And then uh, I guess my, my serious one <laughs> is, is, is it's a little bit more like, Ooh, I see myself a little too much in this. Uh, Shatter Bee by Lindsay Sterling featuring Lizzie Hale. And it's just like, you know, like the, the early verses of the song, is like, it has a lot of uh, ballerina imagery, which is often imagery used to like describe like perfection and poise. And, and uh, it, when it's being used to represent like neg- something like negative, it's that perfection and poise that you have been forced into. Like you are. Uh-huh. So like the early, like the verse is like, I pirouette in the dark. I see the stars through a mirror, tired mechanical heart beat till the song disappears. Just like that feeling of. I'm trapped. I, the stars are like in the mirror. I'm not even seeing them. I'm seeing a reflection. I'm just here going again and again and again because this is what is expected of me. This is what I've been trained to do. Mm-hmm. And it's like, so you have that, that imagery of being trapped, being a ballerina, that the music video is very much like a ballerina in a music box. But the, the reoccurring thing is like, uh, somebody shine a light. I'm frozen by the fear in me. Somebody make me feel alive and shatter me. Cut me from the line, dizzy spending endlessly. Somebody make me feel alive and shatter me. And it's like that feeling that you are trapped in something, that you're frozen in this place, in this time, in this expectations, and you just hate it. You hate the way this is, but you're so scared to get out of it. Like you're mm-hmm. so afraid of stepping off, off this little balance on stepping out of the pirouette, and you're so afraid not to be perceived as perfect anymore, but the only way you can see to get out of it is like, please, someone just let me break everything. I just want to shatter everything I have and then let me pick which pieces I keep and which I get rid of. Mm-hmm. And like, maybe I see myself in that song a little too much. But yeah, those those are my siren songs that I would, if I heard that, yeah. I'm on a boat and that's the song that makes yeah. me feel something. Bye, boat! <laughs> I feel like the uh, the siren songs to a lot of people would be the lows that they put in their get hype mix. The lows in the get hype mix. You can't just it's peaks and valleys, yo. You got it. So you can't in between all the, the popping dance music. As much as I music. want to listen to to Barney Stinson and say you always have highs and peaks, you can't do that realistically. No, it's just you're gonna get exhausted. Yeah. Got to have a couple of valleys. You got to have a breather. Got to have a moment to talk and feel the moment, you know? Mm-hmm. Man, what's the fuck? I always forget. I have one more song that maybe, yeah. at least for a time, I definitely could have related to it. Um, Let You Down by NF. Oh, okay. So, uh, that song, um, it's about uh, a dude who doesn't have the greatest relationship with his, I assume, father, but it could be his mother, just a parent. Mm-hmm. Uh, and at least, like, growing up, right? Growing up, his dad was, like, real hard on him, like, always disappointed in him or whatever. And now his dad wants to be, like, okay. Mm-hmm. And, like, yeah, like, and definitely for a while there, I could have related to that to a point. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like, I, I love our dad. He's great. And had, I do think he did his best. But there were definitely times where I'm like, I'd still feel wronged about this specific situation. Yeah. Uh, and I'd like to talk about it. But it seems like maybe he wants to get past it. But like, he's also like apologized for shit that he's done in the past. 
Uh, and so I'm like, yeah, whatever. And so I listen to that song and I'm like, fuck. I don't I relate to that. it much now, but it could have it could have really hurt me had it come at me at a certain time in my life. <laughs> oh, oh, buddy. Like just yeah. moving out. If I had heard that song when I had just moved out, that shit could have hit a little harder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yes. now I'm like, I hear it. I'm like, eh, it's a good song. <laughs> No, I think that's an interesting thing. I think you just maybe inadvertently brought up about siren songs is that they probably are not the same for you throughout your lifetime. What you would hear the sirens sing and offer would be different. What Percy maybe would have heard at the beginning of Lightning Thief is not necessarily what he would hear at the end of The Last Olympian. If he, if what he heard at the beginning of Lightning Thief, I would believe would be a song about getting his mom back. Yeah. A song about. Like knowing his dad a little more, a song about a place where he can truly belong. Mm-hmm. I mean, like he gets that with Camp Halfblood. At the at last Olympian, a song about just like being with Annabeth. A song because like at that point, like that is getting to peak to where he's starting to realize, oh, I actually have feelings for Annabeth. A song where he just gets like hang out with his friends, worry free. Luke is still there hanging out with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, everyone is safe. Everyone is safe. And because that's his fatal fault, is he's loyal to a mm-hmm. fault. And like, so everyone was saved. Like, Charles Beckendorf is still there. Fucking Selena. Uh, Selena is still there. That would be the song. Michael Yu, uh, Ethan Nakamura, even, I'm yeah, sure. Every, everyone would be there at Camp Half Blood, just hanging out. Nico, Bianca, Zoe. Fucking everyone that we see throughout the whole... If he were to hear that song now, and I believe if he were to hear the song at Blood of Olympus, even... Um, I, I don't, don't think it would change I don't much. Think he, I, don't, I think it might change solely because okay. he now realizes... Uh, I don't. I honestly think he'll hear the song and not be tempted by it. Interesting. Because he like now he's gone past. He's gone past. Like, yeah, sure. He he'd love to have those people, but it's like he accepts the fact that you can't win them all. Because I mean, we we figure that out. Like, at, again, at the end of Blood Olympus, is him giving up the reins and saying, "Okay, Leo, I trust you," and that's him realizing he can't be there for everything. Yeah. And so Leo takes Gaia away. But that shit, I, I just, I think, I don't think he, he would hear a song, but I don't think it would be anything different from what he has now. I was, I was, yeah, because while you were talking, I was thinking how the most satisfied person in the world, someone who truly wants for nothing, would not be tempted by a siren song. They may only appreciate how lovely the music is. I think, I think he'd hear the song and be like, he would see it, and it's just him. At New Rome with Annabeth. I think that's what the siren song would be. And yeah. he, like, he would see Future. that and be like, I'm getting that in like fucking six months. Just calm down. <laughs> calm down. I can, I'll, I'll live for six months. Yeah. Just yeah. won't. <laughs> Shit. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. I'm dying. I'm dead now. I've killed me. Sorry. Spoilers. <laughs> This is a spoiler heavy podcast on all fronts at all things all the yeah. time. Yeah. Um and it, like I guess like thinking about that too, like we could even think about what Apollo would see at the start and end of his series. Ooh. I can't really say it for the end, but that at the start, he would hear the song and be like, it's just him being a god again. Yeah, he just wanted to be a god again. He just wanted to be a god again uh-huh. and just like doing his thing. He he would not have learned anything. Like he would see it and be like, Yeah, I'm a god again. I want it. and he would absolutely do whatever the fuck it takes to get to over To get there, there yeah. Uh, and I can't comment on the end of the series because nope. you haven't read it. <laughs> no, we're a spoiler-heavy podcast in all things except that. <laughs> except for the – we're a spoiler-heavy podcast for what we both know. Exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> for what or we like both what, know. Not what, what one our, knows and the other doesn't care about. Yeah. What, like, what, not, not what our whole fan base knows, but only what we both know. <laughs> and they're – listen, all, all spoilers are listed in the uh, show notes. Also, we'll be in the show notes, uh, a link – to a Spotify playlist in which I will place all of the songs mentioned. I'm going to do it. I'll build a Spotify playlist. It'll be called Siren Songs, and it'll have every song we mentioned, all the songs mentioned from the other podcasters, from the Instagram story. I think I've got a couple that I didn't, like, mention. All of them Mm -hmm. are going to be there. And so 
if you want to send us a message, shoot us an email, PoseidonPod at gmail.com, or hit us up on Instagram with siren song suggestions, like, pills, please feel free to do so. I would love to put those songs also on the playlist. They will just be something that we could just continue to grow and build. I don't do playlists a lot. I don't listen to a lot of music, not for any particular reason. I just listen to a lot of podcasts. So Take that's what I do time. with my ears. Yeah. So that'd be cool. I don't have anything else to say. No. I wanted to talk about the whole siren song is uh, sex, therefore asexuals would not be tempted thing. I didn't like know where to put that, but also I think we talked <laughs> a lot about how, no, it's not really sex, and that's just a thing that dudes made up yeah. later. Yeah. So that's that. I don't know. <laughs> just that's our episode on sirens, I, everybody. I like it so when asexuality is a superpower. I just don't think it would work for. It's I love the ones. I think there's a Tumblr post where it's like, "Oh, asexuals wouldn't be. It'd be great to have an asexual on your your pirate ship because they wouldn't be tempted by the sirens." And then someone's like, "Well, sirens don't really tempt you with sex. They tempt you with like the things you want most." And so then there was like a brief, like you know, short fic, a little ficlet. Where it was like Siren's like, hey, come on, let's go make out. And the ace pirate's like, no, thank you. And they're like, oh, <laughs> we have garlic bread. Oh, shit, what? <laughs> garlic bread? Real shit? Sex, I sleep. Garlic bread? Real shit? Yeah, apparently that's a thing that asexuals are supposed to be super into. I do not like <laughs> garlic bread. No, I think that's just a, that's just a universal thing for most people. It's that's just garlic, just garlic bread. bread. Yeah, for yeah. me, it would probably be like it's like you could really roll like a d twenty, and uh, for like a, like say like you would be a one. Every other number is like yeah, they're garlic looking bread. like garlic bread. Yeah, we like <laughs> like it's fine. I just wouldn't jump in the water for garlic bread. I <laughs> would probably jump for like the little Pillsbury holiday sugar cookies with the designs in colored dough. Uh, Little jack o' lanterns. They're back. <laughs> they're back. I bought the jack o' lanterns. I made half of them. I ate all of them. Yeah, I, I did that, that last would year, me. and I burnt both batches. I was really bummed out about wow. it. Wow, <laughs> you fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> fucked up on both. So um, that's it for this episode. I'm pretty sure that's it for this episode. That's uh, that's our siren episode. Thank you guys so much for joining us. It yeah, means a thank lot. you so much. Uh, again, definitely, definitely chime in with what you think is your siren song what what songs would definitely get you to jump off that boat and swim into the middle of the ocean heck yeah and we'd love to hear you guys i mean that on twitter and instagram mm -hmm. give us a rating on apple podcast we'd oh yeah that. that'd be really cool tell us your fate tell us your hey leave us a review and tell us what your siren song is yeah in the reviews yeah and it's just right there you're about to close the app anyway so just like pull it out give it a five-star review say what your si siren song is we will read it on our next episode you guys have a wonderful day we will be back on Tuesday, October 12th to discuss Polyphemus and also to celebrate our one year podcast birthday. Heck yeah. Yeah. You're in a podcast. Let's go. Fantastic. Well, uh, yeah. In Sullivan, don't be like Zeus. Don't be like Zeus. Podcast of Poseidon is created and hosted by Darian and DJ Smart. It's edited by Darian Smart. The show is produced by Darian and DJ Smart as well as Tim O'Connor, the Crystal Con Man. Our music is Athens Festival by Martin Hain, and our cover art is by Audrey Miller. You can find her on Instagram at Bombshell Nutshell Art. Like the show? Ready for more? Support Podcast Poseidon on Patreon. Just one dollar gets you exclusive bonus content. Find out more at patreon.com slash podcast Poseidon. Can't spare the drachmas? You can support the show by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts or by sharing us with your friends. Find all of our episodes and episode transcripts at podcastofposeidon.com. Thanks for listening.